the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Who is your daddy? <laughs> You know, that's a, that was a good thing I wanted to talk about today, right? Who is your daddy? Right? Who is your daddy? Who is your father? How do you know God is your father? Uh, excuse me, I get my clothes together and straight away. Well, who, how do you know God is your father? That's the subject I want to talk about tonight. I, I think it's important to do that because, you know, I, I, I like that one scripture that said that a tree is known by its fruit. And we know that famous phrase that people used to give it. a lot of people sometimes uh, I, I call uh, religious folks they like to uh, ask a question are uh, you say <laughs> you know you have people sitting there I mean that's a question right that's something similar to what the devil says to and I don't talk about religious folks devils I'm just saying is that that's how the devil approaches people right uh, are you say you know uh, he asked Jesus, if you be the son of God, right? Uh, that's why you have some people say, are you saved, right? They're asking you to answer that question. And they think it's important for you to be able to answer that question. And you know what? As a believer, you need to be able to answer that question. Can people challenge your answer? That's what we really need to focus on. And the focus is that you don't need somebody else to determine your salvation. You don't need their approval. You just need to trust in God. Trust in the word of God. Trust in Jesus Christ. Rely on the Holy Spirit to bear witness. Amen? So, so I want to talk a little bit about that is the... Uh, how do you how do you know uh, that you you're saved? And 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 I want to I, I want to get into that. Uh, and once again, it's like uh, this is 2022. Hey, I mean that's a great thing, right? We we have moved away. I told somebody the day I said one of the blessings is moving from one year to the next year is to is a count your blessings. Uh, and everybody here listening. Know that one day you're gonna we're gonna take this dirt nap, right? And and it, it's gonna say the day you was born, in the year you was born, right? Uh, and then the day that you transition go home to the Lord. Well, uh, right now though there's people who transition went home to the Lord, and the date is what was on the tombstone or is on the tombstone which says something like 2021. What I'm saying is, at least right now, uh, you, you, you know, you, every year you go changes the end date. And hopefully uh, it's the blessing to, to, to have it, hey, you know, with the Bible talking about 75, 85, 120, hey man? And, and therefore, that's what those end dates will be for you. And that's how you will look at it. But the bottom line is we all will transition one day or another. Amen? That's just the truth. So as you transition, you, you want to know that you be in Christ. And that's what we say. If you be in Christ, then you err according to the promise. And so the promise is, and one of the things I like about saying about this promise is that he, he goes, it was a speed in that he goes because he prepares a place for us. So there's a place prepared for you, for me, that have received Jesus Christ, and for anybody else or whosoever believe us, either today, next week, next month, or in the past, made that quality decision. That's all that matters, all right? So when people ask you that, it's like, are you saved? Or in this case, the topic will be, how do you know God is your father? That's, that's the question. See, you both, you need to be able to answer that. And therefore, the day is equipping uh, the saint to know their salvation comes from the Lord. 
Amen. Hey, that's how I look at it is knowing who you are and who you belong to. Because the enemy wants you to belong to him. And if you don't watch out, that sucker will take you. All right? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come and worship and praise your holy name. You said when two or three are gathered in your name, you've been in the midst of them. And now invite and receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us in all truth. Heavenly Father, move me out of the way that the Holy Spirit have its way. Give us a word of encouragement. Give us a word that equipped us to do the work of the ministry. Allow us to be more solid than we were before about understanding your word and feeling your word to us. I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for what you are doing. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right. So look at the topic I had here uh, today. And I, I think it's, I thought it, I think it's important, but I was looking at it. I did one of the uh, TikToks recently, and, and, I, and I saw this, I, I was reading these scriptures, and I was like, wow, wait a minute, this is, this is important uh, to, to understand. Uh, who is your father? How do you know that God is your father, right? In the modern day vernacular, who is your daddy? Or in the scriptures, Abba Father, right? Uh, which is, is how they usually use that term. It's an affectionate term, a relationship, a personal relationship with God the Father. And, and that's something I encourage everyone as one of them, to have a personal relationship with God the Father. Amen? So that's the, that's the focus of that. And, 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 and what the scripture is going to get into is, A, if, you, if somebody want to know, if you want to know whether you have, you're saved, we'll go by the scriptures. And just like what my... Uh, Elders were saying, what one of them is said to make sure you understand what that means, right? Uh, because sometimes people don't know. Some people think that they're saved because they, somebody said the doors of the house are, is, are open. Uh, but the scriptures, I call them title deeds. Now, you know what I mean? Title deeds are the, the authority to, to, to make your proclamation. And when you have that authority, Using that authority, uh, at least nobody on on this earth can can check or challenge you because they don't have the right. Amen. So, first thing you need to know, uh, if you have a question concerning your salvation, uh, I'm gonna go to Romans 10 verse 8. But before that, I do want to to make sure you understand. God the Father. I did recently on, on uh, I think recently on TikTok uh, about God and Him proclaiming who He is, God the Father, right? And 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 the reason I said that because Jesus said that He only thing He did was what He saw the Father do, and that's why I think it's important for us to to know follow Jesus because Jesus said I am the way, and also understand what Jesus was. How Jesus was following God the Father, right? He, he said he does what he says his father do and say, right? So this in Exodus 34, 6 is where Moses uh, was able to see God, uh, the backside of God, as God passed by him, put, put, put Moses on the cleft of a rock. And, and most people said that rock is Jesus, amen? Uh, to allow him to see God. And what I liked about the fact is what did he say about himself, right? And what he said is, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering in the abundance of goodness and truth. Read it again. Exodus 34, 6, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundance of goodness and truth. You know, I, I come off for a second, God, well, I want to make sure you see where I'm coming from. I like that because the fact is, a lot of cases, and, and I'm talking about from a religious perspective, we try to make God seem like someone sitting on the on his throne with a with a with a, a stick and, and and ready to knock you in the head if you don't get your act together. You know, we, we like to portray that 
image of God. And God wanted to make sure that the world understand how he proclaimed himself to be. Is it wrath of God? Yeah. But he's, he's, he's saying is that that's only if you want to step on that side that equals wrath. But he's not sitting on a throne with a stick in his hand waiting to knock you in the head to put you in line. That's, 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 I just want to make sure you get that. That is not God. That is not what he said. See, it, look, it's not about me. It's about him. What he said he is. Amen? So I think you all remember that. What God says he is. Because who he is matters to you. You know, to have a personal relationship. Because, you know, we have had fathers, I mean, parents, and, and some of the parents have been uh, very mean and aggressive and, and uh, in some cases abusive. And we don't want to portray that to, to, to anybody that God is an abuser. No, no, God is just. And we're not supposed to be in that position to execute punishment, not, not those who are sent to preach the gospel. And somewhere along the line, man, we, we got into this where I, I want to preach this fire and brimstone. Well, you preach that fire and brimstone, well, you make sure you tell them that it ain't you that put them in there. You can't put people in hell. Amen? It's the only place to put the person in hell is the person making that decision. And God says, put them in there because he made that decision. And, and, and that's why you, you, so don't do that because you're not the, you're not the, you're not the judge. Some people come and try to make themselves the judge, but you're not the judge. And you don't portray God as somebody who spend more time thumping, Bible thumping, instead of loving and being compassionate and merciful. That's, I mean, I just want to make sure we leave that image with you. What, what God is to you. You gotta, if you wanna have a personal relationship with him, you wanna make sure my relationship with him is not an abusive father, but a loving and compassionate father in heaven, amen? So I just wanna throw that out there because I think it's important. Because somewhere along the line, we got into, well, some people, I'm not saying everybody, but some people got into that, 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 that uh, mindset that, you know, we, 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 we law and order. So we're gonna enforce the law instead of saying God, who he is. We need to be just like he. That's what we wanna be, we wanna be just like God. And I ain't talking about be God, but be like God. You remember the scripture said in Genesis 128, it said, let us make man in our image, right? So I just wanna say that if we're gonna operate in the image of God, then we should also pick up the characteristic of the nature of God. You don't get somebody to say, well, I'm, I'm telling you, no, God is God and there's no other God besides him. We are the children of God. Those who have received God. We're all made in the image of God, but our connection is complete when we have a relationship with him. And I'm saying this, it's easy to have a relationship with him as a merciful God. Instead of someone sitting on the throne just ready to swack somebody in the head every time you turn around. That's not, that's not, that's not what he proclaimed. I'm just saying just what he proclaimed. In Exodus 34, 6, and the Lord passed by before him, Moses, and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and the abundance of goodness and truth. What? He, he proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, meaning having patience and tolerance in abundance and goodness and truth. That is God proclaiming to Moses. That is God proclaiming to us who he is and how he wants to be betrayed. That's what Jesus said. When Jesus started talking, when Jesus showed up, he called God the Father. And that's why we got to sit this in that the Father means a personal relationship. There's a relationship between a father and his children. And that relationship can't be, and I know some of you was raised to be in a situation where you, you, you was terrorized by your father or your mother. But that's not, that's not, that's not the image that God wants to have, a relationship God wants to have with you. Or me. 
Uh, so I'm going by this. <laughs> that scripture is very clear. I read it again because I want to put that in you. Get that in your heart. Get that in your mind. Exodus 34, 6. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundance and goodness and truth. What? That's the God we're talking about. That's the God we serve. I want you to know that. Now, one of the questions that went in there that you as a believer will sometimes have people uh, questioning your salvation, questioning who you are. And see, so therefore what, I, what I'm tackling in a couple of things is first, letting people who view God as sometimes, and like I said, somebody sitting on the throne with a stick, at the Exodus one was just to show you how he wants to be uh, viewed because that's what he proclaimed in Exodus 34, six. But the other one is that when somebody wants to check you out and try to call you out and, and, and say how you say, and I want to make sure you understand that your salvation is rest secured. I mean, like in John 3, uh, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, not what color, not what nationality, not what ethnic group. I mean, you got some people that sit there and say, oh, he's just talking about Israel. Hey, John 3, 16 said, and this is Jesus. Who's, why well, we know Jesus in the red, right? He <laughs> said it, right? He said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He did not put a limitation. You can put a limitation if you want to. You can go with some scripture there and say, well, he hated so-and-so. Did he say he hated him forever? That's what, maybe that's what you need to understand. Where did he say he hated him forever? Where did he say he hated his generations of children forever and ever? If you don't see that, and he proclaims this, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but everlasting life. See, I know it's easy for some people to sit there and try to narrow it down or cut people out because they don't want to see a merciful God. And they want to be able to discriminate or feel there's a discrimination that goes on between God and man. No, the, the connection is Jesus Christ between God and man. And if you have that connection, then you have your salvation. So that's what the, that's what the word says. So you, you know, some people say it's an ad. I, I, I know one of my friends that was added. I, I'm going by what the word says. See, I, I have to take the whole Bible and put it into the context of the whole Bible. And the scripture, you can't, you're not gonna pick and choose or cherry pick the scripture because that's what you feel is important. No, go with the script. Everything needs to line up, precept upon precept, line upon line, here, there, little there, because that's what God wants us to do. You are a child of God if you receive him. You are a child of God if you believe in him. There's your salvation. So let's go ahead into the scriptures and, and let's read that. This is wrong. This is one of my favorite ones, which I call the, the title deed. And you call the title deed of faith if you want to, because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Look at Romans 10. And I started verse 8, but I normally, my title deed is normally Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. But I, I decided to put 8 in there as well. It says, But well, what say is it? The word, the word of God is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Hey, come on, preachers. Come on, preachers. Yeah, I know some of you want to preach fire and brimstone, but go ahead and preach what he wants you to do. Go do what he told you to do. Go preach the gospel. He sent you to preach the good news and fire and brimstone. Maybe some people, and I know, I heard one friend, I think pastor, one other minister, I have a, a, a look at Clapham Dollar. He was sitting there saying is that he felt that he chose the route of salvation because he didn't want to go to hell. So, and, and, and there may be a lot of people out there who needs to, to be reminded of the consequences of not receiving Christ. But what we need to make sure we understand, regardless, there is a hell. 
and nobody don't, and people don't, those who don't want to accept that, that's okay because you don't control it. Just like you don't control you breathing in the morning, just like you couldn't control you being born into this earth, right? Just like something you know you can't control, you can't control what God says. It says not different. You can, you can, you can mouth that and say, you know, because you're going to go before God just like anybody else. And you can sit there and say, uh, let me come off this for a second. You, you, can, you can sit there and say that I not, I didn't receive it. I don't believe it. I don't believe, some, you know, you have some people sit there and say, I don't believe, you know, after like, it doesn't matter. You don't have control of it. And to tell you, you do have control of it, all that you can do is mouth. You can speak, but we, you don't have, neither of, none of us have the control of when we leave this world, nor do we have control of what exists after this life, this physical life. And if you can't control it, you can make sense and say, well, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't know. And you maybe you maybe do better with that, but don't sit there and say you know that there's no hell and that there's no heaven. You don't know. You all you can sit there and say, I just I don't see it, can't measure it, can't that's that's your choice. <sighs> that's your choice. It doesn't mean that your choice, because a lot of things, you you know, we look at it even right now, we come out with this is the anniversary of January 6th. Well, you have some people say, I believe the election was stolen. You know, they, they, that's their belief. That's their position. It doesn't make it any different, does it? They can sit there and try to attack the Capitol, burn the Capitol. They can sit there and try to stop and make different laws, but it does not change the outcome that happened in 2020. They, I know we want to sit there and use excuses to try to uh, actually, you know, when, when it was an accusation of being rigged, now there's, there's an actual active attempt to rig, and then that's going to be something we have to deal with uh, in 2022 and 2024. But the point I'm sitting there saying is, man, uh, what you have no authority of, doesn't matter what you believe. Your belief doesn't, doesn't change the, the truth. The Bible said the truth will make you free. So if you, some of you believe, there's the, some of you who listen and don't believe in Jesus Christ, don't believe in heaven, don't believe in, that there's a hell. That's 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 a choice. But just as long as you understand and just as well as I understand, we don't control that. We don't control the outcome of what happens after we leave this this body, except when we make a quality decision now by faith. Is that when I step out of this body? absence of the body is present with the Lord. That is my decision. That's what I have control of while I am alive. Uh, so I'm not going to, it's by faith too, right? That's what the Bible says, the just live by faith. So I don't go by, I know, I know. It's by faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. So all I know is that by faith, when when I close my eyes for the last time, that's that's uh that's when it's time to see the glory of God. That's when I reach the end of my faith, and now I'm in the presence of the Lord. For you that don't want to believe that and accept it, all you need to understand is you have no control of outcome once you close your eyes for the last time. You made your decision while you're alive. And uh, I just pray, just make a quality decision. That's up to you. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything, whether you do or not. It's not gonna change me. It's not gonna change the, the truth. It's just gonna put you in a position of what's, what's gonna happen after you pass away. So the people are like, feet fire brimstone. Well, there's your fire brimstone message. Make a decision. Choose Christ, choose life, and choose eternal life, amen? All right, so let's go ahead in this title deed, I like it put it down here. I really do think it's uh, worth reading. I do read, I just read verse 8 in Romans 10, and I'll do it again. Verse 8, but what says it? The word is not the even in that mouth and in that heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. This is a title deed. 
Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, the reason I think it's important for, for you to know that is that when somebody says, well, how do you know you're saved? You, you can, this is one of your titles. You use others. He who, calls on, he who calls on the Lord shall be saved. Right? That's, that's another scripture that, that'll work. But the point I like, the fact is that if somebody asks you, are you saved? You can say, well, Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, that means I'm saying is that I am now asking for Christ to be Lord of my life instead of the world or me. Because I know I have no power. I know I can't, I can't determine who lives or who dies. But I can, I, can, I can determine who I want to be to sit on the throne of my life. And I, I make that choice that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my personal Savior. I'm making that decision. I don't, I don't need you to prove it. I don't need to prove it to you. I'm just telling you, I'm making the confession that I made to him. And for you to hear, if you want to hear it or need to hear it. So when somebody questions you, you can say, Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, if I confess my mouth to the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And I like that piece because the saying is that I'm believing that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that delivers me. It's the same power that's going to take me through day-to-day -day living. It's the same power that gives me eternal life. That, that's, that's what I like about that. So, and then go back to the other part of that. With the heart, with the mouth, one makes, let me say, make, I'll just get it right. I'll just read it. <laughs> I like quoting it, but sometimes, I, if I can't, you know, one thing about me, you got to quote, you got to start from the beginning so you don't mess it up uh, afterward, right? But it says right here, uh, verse 9 again, but if thou shalt confess that our mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. Verse 10 said, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that confession is not to man. That confession is to God. You can say that in front of man. You can say it in front of congregation. Or you can say it in your closet. Or you can say it in your car. It doesn't matter. The fact is that you made that confession that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. <laughs> that, that settles it. That settles it right there. Somebody say, is that it? Well, I'm telling you that that's what the Word says. That's it. That, that's, that's, that's what matters. And, and so, so you do that. You make that confession. And you go get baptized. You get baptized to protect. As a matter of fact, that's one thing about getting the baptism. What you're talking about is it is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, but there's also the water baptism of repentance, which, which is really a proclamation to the world that you have received and confessed and been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And I know that some people are controversial saying, no, you got to say it in Jesus' name. Well, Jesus' name, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the, the, the point of that is the fact is that these are some of the offers and positions of God because he came in the body and flesh of Jesus so he can communicate so we can relate to him. You can't relate to him in the flesh. But he, he came so that you could touch him. You. And I'm talking about those that were there when he was there at that time. Amen. But the bottom line is I like this part about the scripture. That with a mouth or with a heart man believes in the righteousness. See, it's my heart and my belief that gives me righteousness. Amen. And with the mouth confession, I, I speak life. When the scripture says, death and life and the power of the tongue, and those that love it eat the fruits thereof. So therefore, I make that confession that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. And that's what I like about that. And then John, matter of fact, in John 14, 6, 
It says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way in the truth, in the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. 